Oh shit. I forgot to push record. Okay. Hi, hello there. I'm Wilford McGee and uh, welcome to the McGee residence. Uh, it's early morning here and uh, I like to sit here and have a, bring my cup of coffee and uh, eat a bowl of Quaker oats and I take my crap. Ah. Ah. And after that, I like to go through my mail. Uh, what do we have? Um, the collection agency, they're not going to get a son of me. Send for me. Uh, what the hell is this? The IRS, I ain't paying them anything there. Uh, what, voter registration, they're both a couple of crooks. I'm not voting for either of these idiots. Uh, what else we have here? Well, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to say is, you you, you have to have uh, your priorities straight, and uh, I, I don't care about any any of this. But I did get something interesting in the mail. Maybe you got this in the mail too. It's uh, a survey. They're making a new movie. It's a documentary about someone named Velvet Hale. Get into Velvet Hale. Gallons and gallons of elves and 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 Actually, if you're watching this, chances are you're in it or know someone who is. On December 8th, 1980, John Lennon was shot. Three days later, Velvet Owl was born. I'm Velvet Owl, by the way. Which you probably already know. I mean, you are watching a documentary on Velvet Owl. And why would you do that unless you want to know more about Velvet Owl, which implies that you knew Velvet Owl, at least something about Velvet Owl in the first place. But that's me. Blah, blah, blah. Velvet Owl grew up. It was very much like Full House if Stephanie ate her sisters. At first, Al had his eyes set on becoming a writer, even joining the largest student-run magazine of the East Coast, Generation Magazine. Generation Magazine. In uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, he was one of the few that I would dare say loved it as much as I did. He loved it to the point that he would go into the archives naked and, you know, come out with a lot of paper cuts. Let's put it that way. Perverted genius. I would go in there too. I mean, I, you know, I arrange those things and, uh, I would, you know, but I would, I would tell them my hopes and dreams, you know, but not Al. Sticky pages. Unfortunately, writers are not chick magnets. Realizing that becoming a rock star would be the only way he'd ever get laid, Velvet Al decided to become a rock star. Fans of the early 21st century Buffalo music scene may remember him as the less talented half of the Next Syphilis. Originally, the Next Syphilis was a ska band. Uh, it had 186, 187, uh, forgot about the flugel player, uh, members uh, that were very quickly reduced down to two uh, when Al discovered that, you know, he, you could keep a lot more of the bar's earnings if you had less members. So he got rid of all the people and it was just him and Jack Toff doing the next syphilis, and they were a staple of the Buffalo, you know, indie bar music scene for quite a long time. Except for the fact that it's in the ketchup factory. I want to kill rats. I want to kill the rats in the ketchup factory. It's not really like ketchup. And ketchup should be kept sanitary. And rats take care of diseases. So someone's got to kill the rats to keep the ketchup clean. I want to be that guy. I want to kill the rats. And I will take pride in my work because it's important for people to enjoy what they do. I wouldn't just leave poison or traps for the rats. I would hunt the rats down. 
When the rats are captured, I want the last thought in their mind. I've been captured by the bus, and there's no shame in that. Uh, the Nixiphilus, they are uh, probably my favorite uh, noise band. Well, they're like my third favorite noise band, and uh, I know like three noise bands. <laughs> Florence Foster Jenkins once said, People may say I can't sing, but no one can ever say I didn't sing. Is that a terrible female impersonation? Sh should I not do that? Oh well. Velvet Owl took this quote to heart. Maybe a little too much. Get up and dance!
like Pam In blue with yellow polka dot underwear Not as much as As much as I like That guy and not knowing what kind of underwear he has No, seriously It was bad <laughs> tried being a magician. So for my next trick, I'm going to make a penis appear out of my pants. Well, you know, some guys are showers, some guys are growers, I'm a shrinker. Where'd it go? I don't know, it just disappeared. Hey, you know, the severed penis doesn't count. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna saw you in half. I forgot my saw, so does anyone have a rusty blade? <laughs> oh my god, yes! <laughs> How convenient for everyone involved. I have to have a rusty blade inside of my pocket with a light, a, a, a flashlight with the word Diva. Oh, I was not expecting that. It might, it might come into play at a later trick. You need not a kid, not a girl, not a girl, Ted. Ah, uh, Rusty Blade, there it is. I will take that card, which you all saw went somewhere inside the deck, mm -hmm. and I will magically make it appear at the top of the deck. Okay. I need some encouragement. Magic, okay. magic is kind of like... Oh, you may wonder why I got into magic, and it's because I have a detachable thumb. Ooh. Yeah. I'm just kidding. My thumb's right there. See my hand? It's empty. I am going to make a coin appear in this empty hand. What? I never said I was going to make it appear out of thin air. This trick is called the stationary pencil. Woo! It does not move. And whatever the hell this is. 
Do do do, I'm a fish and I'm making my way in the world. Oh hi, Mr. Bunny. I'm glad you're not a duck. <laughs> oh no, your duck friends are attacking! No! As the postmodern Jesus, that was his first thing. And he recited the vagina monologue. It was beautiful. It was, it was sublime. I, I, I cried. I, I'm not ashamed to say I, I, I still cry when I, when I think of it. But So why did Velvet Owl continue? One word. He's a fucking narcissist. Wait, that's actually four words. Like all narcissists, Velvet Owl became obsessed with leaving a legacy. And like any Netflix user will tell you, you can't have a legacy without a documentary. Legendary documentarians like Werner Herzog and Ken Burns refused to do it, so Velvet Al took it upon himself to make one. He set up a Kickstarter to finance it. That did not go so well. But he did cobble together enough footage to make some trailers. Sind Sie auf der Velvet Edge? Der Mann. Der Mythos. Die manchmal Frau. Die Legende. Er mag Vagina. Wer? Oh, kein Kommentar. Er ist ein lustiger Kerl. Der liebt nur dumm Köpfe. Denkt über Titten und es zu tun. Er hat eine nette Rack. Elektrische Titten. Elektrische Titten. Sehr schöne Rack. Das ist etwas. Ich bin mir zu... Wait. He took the time to translate and record a German version? Who the fuck does that? A fucking narcissist, that's who. I mean, what? Does he have a Swedish version as well? In part two of volume one. Han gillar slidon. En riktigt trevlig rack. Elektriska bröst. Mjuk och krämig och samhällslen. Han tvärbaggade gång mig. Han glömde att torka och vänster choklad fläckar över min panna. These trailers started building buzz with the people who appeared in them. But unfortunately, Velvet Al's computer crashed. And his dreams crashed with it. In addition to being a narcissist, Velvet Al is an idiot, and he did not back up his files. All was lost, except for a brief clip. <laughs> what is Velvet Al? Same fucking question. The man, the myth, the sometimes woman, the legend. <laughs> and you're wearing a woman's, um, yeah. bathroom yeah. of some sort. This guy, that seemed like a girl, 
What was the guy? That hot chick covered in elephant cum. He's got really nice he's got, boobs. He's got, like, he's got real nice boobs. He's got a nice, he's got a nice rack. <laughs> nice cleavage. The best boob shakers around. Velvet Al is the most beautiful person in the world. It was super dreamy. Velvet Al. Velvet Al is sexiness in content. He's like Michelangelo's, uh, David, his, his physique is perfectly in proportion, his head's the right size, and um, I just love the guy. Velvet Al is a rockin' cool dude. I think Velvet Al is a really solid guy, and you know, I've known him for a few years now, and he's always made me laugh, and sometimes he shocks me a little bit, but you know, that's always a good thing, you know? Velvet Al is a very creative performer that likes to push the limits of normalcy into realms that um, most people are unaware of, but they're there. They're just behind the scenes, and somehow, because of his energetic connections, Velvet Al finds them and brings them to us. Velvet Al has influenced, has changed my life over and over again. Velvet Al has made me laugh from the inside out. Velvet Al has taught me things and made me think about the world around me. Velvet Al has changed my life so many times for the good. Velvet Al is a crazy guy and he's a famous guy in Buffalo. You hear about him before you meet him and then when you meet him, it blows your expectations out of the water. He's never asked a lot from me. The only thing he's ever asked is to do an interview for this documentary and I obliged. Velvet Al is um, somebody who is very in tune with pop culture. That's something I'm pretty sure about. Well, he's got an uh, elf puff one, which is more than I got. He's a funny guy who just loves the boobies. He likes vagina. We. That Velvet L guy likes sucking dick as much as I do. <laughs> He's definitely one of the most unique personalities I've ever met in my life. Um, uh, Velvet L is one of the most charismatic, shenanigan filled um, performers in the restaurant. Velvet L is awesome. It's very entertaining and makes people laugh and has great status updates that make people think about boobs and doing it. And what more could you ask for? <laughs> Super villainy. Yeah. Velvet Al is probably one of the funniest individuals I've ever met in my entire Not only funny looking, but he's got a funny mind. And a funny mouth. And funny everything. Everything's pretty funny about him. Even his cancer was pretty funny. I will always associate Velvet Al with delicious, sweet, sticky, voluminous lip-licking marshmallow fluff, either generic or brand name. He doesn't need any fucking peanut butter with it. He's nutty enough. You think velvet, nice and soft and fuzzy? That's pretty much Velvet Al right there. He's soft and smooth as his name! Velvety and refreshing to the touch! Hence the name Velvet Al. Kesha ain't got shit on Velvet Al. Dashed and dejected, Velvet Al entered a deep depression and disappeared. And then the great pandemic of 2020 hit. And the internet saw the rise of quarantine videos where people would record themselves and the footage would be edited together. And Velvet Al had a revelation. He could make his documentary by letting others do his work. And so once again, we will try to solve one of life's great mysteries. What do people think of Velvet Al? He's the uh, show me your boobs guy on Facebook, right? I think Velvet Al is uh, a national treasure. He's a, a, a folk hero of my generation, and I think he's the greatest folk hero in America, or maybe even the world. Okay, you know, I always, I always kind of wonder why he went with Velvet. I always thought he was more crimson than anything else. 
where the first few years that I knew Al, I thought he was uh, Mr. Ski Mask, which is odd because I had seen them in the same room numerous times. I think Velvet Al is awesome, and I miss seeing him out uh, dressed in a hot dog suit making everyone laugh <laughs> during infringement. I would like Velvet Al to perform again, sign up, do some things, do the stuff. I miss your performance art shenanigans. What are my thoughts on Velvet Al? Well, it would take a really long time to tell you all of them, but I can tell you that they're all mostly good. Velvet Al's a stand-up guy. He's a wonderful friend, husband, father, all that good stuff. He's a cool, creative, funny guy who's always nice and has uniquely entertaining performances. He has a valuable perspective that is very different than most other people's ways of thinking about or looking at things. And he'd come into the, to the event or whatever he was doing with, with bells on. Well, maybe not bells, maybe a, some type of suit or maybe no clothes at all, but he would be there nonetheless. And he jerked off on a stage when we were doing uh, 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 exploding chaos and we, we were exploding. You know, I remember one time, um, you know, we, we touched dicks in the back of the Continental and the thing that I thought was really weird about the experience was I had no idea where Al got the dicks. He's not a pervert, and he doesn't like that when I when I do this. But he, I think he does like it. To be honest with you, I think Crimson Alvin has a much better ring to it. It's snappier. Refresh. 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 I don't think anyone else is going to send anything in. If you comb through Velvet Owl's quote, artistic, end quote, output, You'll find a common theme. He seems very obsessed with boobs. 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 Which begs the question: Is he a creative genius, brilliantly satirizing the fragile male ego, or is he just a pervert? Well, <laughs> are those things we're separating now? I'm. Hmm. Does it have to be one or the other, or can it be both? He's definitely not neither. Am I allowed to pick a little bit of in-between? Because I think everything that he does is very well thought out. I think that uh, it's, it's all about shock and awe with what, uh, with what Al does. But I think that, again, I think it's all very well thought out, and I think that um, he puts on a good show. Velvet Al is a creative genius. Because he likes magic wands. And I'm not a pervert, and neither is Velvet Al. I am pretty sure that Velvet Al is a creative genius. I could be wrong, though. I don't know if I would go so far as to say that he's a creative genius, but he is very creative in very unique ways and is only slightly perverted. Velvet Al is one of the most amazing creative geniuses there is he may be a pervert he may be not he may not be sorry a lot of famous artists were both i don't think you have to choose between the two <laughs> you could be both a pervert and a creative genius why not dream big well i think it's more that he's a perverted genius and maybe a creative pervert there's a little bit of all of that going on. I would consider Velvet Al a creative, perverted genius. Uh, both of these things are great. 70% pervert and 50% uh, genius. That is to say, he's 50% perverted genius and 20% just pervert. I'm gonna go with, um, I'm gonna go with like four answers here. No, maybe three. Uh, both, yeah.
that's that's the obvious one, I guess. Um, perverted genius and genius at being a pervert. So uh, I think you got three answers there. Um, take your pick. I'd take them all if I were you. Cause... Why can't it be both? You know, I mean, uh, you know, any old pervert can touch dicks with you in the back of a Continental. But only Velvet Al would provide the dicks. Both of them. He may be an evil creative genius, though I am not sure. So we must investigate further. I think Velvet Al is a genius that must be celebrated. But also, I think he is a pervert and a threat to our community and our American way of life. I propose that we celebrate him. We put him on a pedestal and then we take him on this pedestal and nail it to a cross. We can build statues of him and and effigies of him and then we burn them. So uh, yes, uh, genius, pervert, and a threat to all we hold dear. So when I was studying at film school, which is, you know, is a school where you study film, I was studying under the great John Cassavetes. I was a younger man back then, and he was much less dead. And he taught me the importance of using nudity in a film. He said that it helps with the critics, because it gives a more mature feeling to it. The thought of dealing with adult themes, because nude people, it's for adults. Children, they should not see nude people. And children should not be nude on film. So nudity on film is for adults. So the critics love it. But more importantly, and this is an exact quote. Actually, it was a Francois Truffaut quote. I've never been able to pronounce his name properly. But John Cassavetes was quoting me, the great Francois Truffaut. And he said that nudity helps sell films commercially because people love to see titties. So... I asked the women out there, will you help me with my film? Will you show your boobs? One. No. No. Nope. I can't know. Wow. <laughs> so so much. Not tonight. We're going to have a few drinks first and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I would do it on, like, on your deathbed. Several years ago, the filmmakers contacted Double D, or Dee Dee, if you want to be respectful and not a misogynistic creep. But we contacted Double D and we asked her to show her boobs because, well, in her own words, I have rockin' boobs. Dr. Boobs. So you see, we really had no choice but to ask her, and this is what she said to us. No, not right now. But surely, with time, things must have changed, right? I did state for the record that I have rockin' boobs. Well, that answer hasn't changed. My boobs are still rocking, and no, you still can't see them. You can't blame a guy for trying. I cannot show my boobs. No, I can't do that. Um, I'm sorry. Maybe someone else can. These boobs that I got here are privileged goods. <laughs> and you can only see them if uh, you are one of the privileged few. I meant to have some boobs for you for this video since I promote uh, coverage, exposure of uh, Free the Titty, but I am in the park and it is cold. Show you my boobs? I don't know about that. Oh well. At least we've got moves. You're like, you're like a synthesizer. I didn't
might want to lick my boobs. But he's never asked me, so he's not a pervert. Okay, all you assholes. You're a bunch of fucking assholes.